Hello and welcome back to part 2. Alright, before we begin, I just want to apologize for the recording quality of this video and the video before this. The record I'm using is very uh, bad when it comes to resolution, so I, I apologize for that. But it's all I have to work with at the moment, but um, I'll be getting new software quite soon, so my future videos should look quite good. Alright, so this is where we finished last time, and today we'll be texturing this couch using um, nice fabric texture and we'll be um, UV unwrapping it and all that great stuff. But before we begin, I just want to go ahead and add a mesh and plane. This will be what our couch is, this will be what our couch was standing on. And also the background, so let's just put, position this under the legs of the couch. And then let's extrude this to about there. No, actually, let's go farther out. Just like that. And then let's add two loop cuts just over here. I'm going to try to go through this video as quickly as possible. I don't want to waste your time or you know, just your time. I've actually have better things to do. I want to stop making your own stuff in Blender. Alright, so I'm just going to rotate this to about there because I'm going to be positioning it. Sorry, I'm going to be positioning the camera at an angle. Okay, so going into the camera mode by hitting the camera view mode by hitting numpad 0. Uh, my screen cost keys isn't on. Oh, there it is. By hitting 0, numpad 0, and shift F, we get to control the camera um, with the A, S, W, and D keys, and of course the mouse, like we would um, control the camera within a game. So that's a nice, fun, easy way to control the camera. And then just positioning this to about there. And like cut them off. Okay, that looks good. Alright, so actually put it back before. Yeah, no, let's bring it up. Okay, so now the last thing to do, we're gonna be adding a another plane. Bring it up about there because this is gonna be our lighting. Let's go into um this material in the uh, window here, add new material, and then make this a emission, and set the strength to about 5. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Yep, that looks good. Okay. So, now what we want to do, um, so, yeah, okay, let's move this, the camera, let's leave this lamp here, I don't need that stupid lamp. Okay, so what you want to do is select the the light, the camera, and the this background here. Move it to layer three, so we have layer. Let's move that to layer four. So we have layer one and two to play around with. Ah, uh, can't remember that's layer one. Okay, layer three. All right, so can I have a drink of water here. Okay, so now we want to be UV unwrapping our our cushions and armrests. So select the first cushion, move this to layer 2, move this to layer 2. Um, the only reason why we do this is so we can UV unwrap it without uh, just the couch getting in our way. Let's so go into edit mode, select um, edge select mode, and then just select these edges I'm selecting right here. I'll show you why we're doing this in a second. Uh, just like this. and hit uh, control e mark seam okay so basically why we're doing this is we're showing blender where we want the, the texture to be positioned um, basically so in order to see if we're marking the seams correctly I'm going to go into UV image editor I'm going to create a new image and the only thing we're going to change is the generate type, and it's going to be UV grid. It's okay. And then add a new material. This will be our UV grid. So over here by where it says color, hit that dot on the right side, image texture, and then select our UV grid. So just small words over here. All right. So let's go ahead and unwrap our whole couch by hitting A to select all. U, unwrap. Now going into texture view mode, you can see it looks nice. 
me show you what it looks like if we don't uh, if we don't mark our seams. Just real quick. You see, if we were to unwrap it like, uh, where did I do wrong over there? Uh, non uniform scale. Just hit. I'm confused. Hmm. Object has a non uniform scale. Unwrap or operate non scaled version. Okay, whatever. That just proves my point. You want to unwrap <laughs> your. You want to uh, mark seams. Um, marking seams really just comes with practice. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm too good at it, uh, you know, knowing where to mark your, your seams. But there's lots of help online, so you can go look there if you're ever stuck. Uh, sorry, I'm just adding a freaking loop cut. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark those seams again. Okay, so let's move this cushion over to layer 1 and then grab. Oh, before I forget, um, what we want to do while we're unwrapping this is hit S while your cursor is over in the UV um, image editor window. Hit S number two because we want our uh, we want more of our fabric texture to more of our fabric texture to be repeated on each cushion. All right, so bring the next cushion over to layer two and do the exact same boring thing. Marking seams. Okay. Mark seam. Doing the same thing using A, U, unwrap. Material, give it our new material. And then that looks good. Take that back over to layer 1. I guess we can both uh, do both discussions at the same time. Uh, let's just first give them our. Material here. Alright, let's mark these seams. Just want to be adding these seams right over here. Just like that. Mark seam. Then let's unwrap this. See what it looks like. Great, yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Doing the same thing for this cushion. Come on, why isn't this one? <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, there you go, I have it. Okay. Doing the same, marking the seam, and wrapping it. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks good. Let's move those back over to the first layer. And then, oh man, I forgot to scale them. So let's do that quick. Cool. Okay, so now the armrest. Let's delete the armrest, this, um, one of the armrests, because we'll just be duplicating the one that we uh, unwrapped to save time. So let's move this armrest up. Let's just move. Yeah, for now, let's take the cover back over to the first layer. Okay, so now, the problem with this, if we UV unwrap this, even if we mark seams, the texture will not look good on it. Reason being, my subdivision surface here is affecting too much of the physical geometry. So we want to go ahead and apply this, um, this uh, shader, we, sorry, this subdivision surface we have here, and then we can start marking seams. Okay, so I want to mark those seams, those seams, and then the ones right at the bottom there, and that looks good. Control E, mark seam, and of course add our material, and then UV unwrap it. How does that look? That looks good. Move that back over to the first. Oh, come on, move that to the first layer, go to the first layer, grab the armrest cover, move that over to the second layer. Doing the exact same thing, except not um, applying our subdivision surface, because over here we can see that it's not affecting too much of our uh, geometry. That's some weird thing there. Uh, just like that, that's good, doing the same thing, marking seams by Control e Unwrapping this and then of course giving it our material. 
How does that look? Good. And then, of course, scaling it. Aha! That's like the second time I'm going to do it. And then, um... We didn't do it on this, did we? If I can actually select that, no, we didn't. See, um, must have made that mistake there. I must make sure your cursor is over the window you want to work in. I'm always making that mistake. Okay, and then duplicating the sum rest and taking that over to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to be doing something different with our base. We don't need to UV uh, marking seams here because it's simply enough just to select these faces right here. And then this one's too. And they're hitting U project from view. So that's what we're doing in a second. Let me just finish up. U project from view. Going back over to the side view. Selecting all of these nice faces. Just like this. And then, of course, project from view. Okay, and I haven't given this some material. Okay, so let's make sure our faces are nice. Yep, that's good. Scale this uh, two again. Oh, come on. No. Select the whole thing, let's go up to, and then that looks good. Um, okay, I think that's it for our UV unwrapping. Oh, uh, this back gotcha. Um, I'm actually not going to do anything with this, it's, it'll just be a waste of time, because we're not going to be seeing it, so you can do that if, you, um, if you're going to be seeing that, but um, I'm just going to uh, quickly do this tutorial, so I'm not going to bother with that one. Okay, so... The texture I'm going to be using, the fabric texture, can be found at this website. I'll be posting a link in the description uh, below. So go ahead and download that. And what we'll be doing is opening this up in GIMP or Photoshop. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Of course, um, I'll be using GIMP because most people, most Blender users use GIMP. I'm just going off its color and desaturating it. The reason why we're doing this is because um, we'll be doing all the colors within Blender itself. So once you've done that, go and export as. Uh, da -da -dum. Save this. Save this black and white fabric texture. Export. Oh, things loading. Go on, export. Oh, there you go. Full quality, of course. All right, now um, I was. Planning on saying something I forgot what it was. Oh yes, one common mistake that people make is when they go file to save their image, they select save as. Um, of course, GIMP is used like Photoshop to make massive projects, and you will usually save your project like you'd save a, a Blender a Blender project. So when you hit export as, that's kind of like rendering it. What's taking so long to export? Oh, there you go. This wasn't registering to my click. All right. So now that we've saved that, well, what we've got to do is go on over, bring up this timeline, go into our node editor, and then just space these apart a bit. All right. So now let's delete this uh, UV grid texture. And then go ahead and open, and then open our the texture we just saved. You'll see, there it is, yay! All right, so you see, it's already um, that's the reason why I did the unwrapping. It's already saved it for us over here now. Cool, so it looks quite good. It's unwrapped nicely, as you can see, very nicely. Um, don't worry, this isn't what's going to be rendered because that looks terrible. It's going to have a sip of water. All right, so let's just okay. So we have that now. What we want to be doing is adding a mix RGB and then adding a Fresnel node, attaching our Fresnel to the factor image of our mix RGB, and then adding a color. Color ramp 
that's in over there. Okay, so what I went for is kind of like a black fabric, um, black fabric suede type of, type of thing. So um, the Fresnel, the value that I found worked was around 1.6, but of course we can change it if it doesn't work. And then let's go ahead and change this value on our mix shader, the bottom one here, to bring that down a bit. And then, um, no, excuse me, it's water. And then it might be hard to select this line here, but you see this line right over there, just select that and bring that value so down. We're just, um, we'll be changing these to more precise values later on, but just a, a rough thing for now. Right, and then we have our image texture. Let's go here and add a texture coordinate node. Attach the UV to the vector input of our texture image texture. And then add a mapping node. That's a normal map, map mapping node right there. And then so um, that actually should be fine for now. Okay, let's go into our camera mode power numpad zero, and then shift B for box select, and then just select a portion of our couch. Okay. Oh, light's looking a little weak, isn't it? Let's just um, duplicate this light. Yeah. That's better. Why does it look so dim still? Turn this value up to around seven. Uh, All right, great. That looks good. Okay, so not much work left to be done. Just to um, adjust the R. Oh, just adjust some of our values. But um, actually, I think this looks quite good. Yes, I guess that's as close as we're going to get to my what I wanted to show you how to create. Um, of course, if you don't like it, go ahead and change some of these color values. You may like blue, <laughs> change it to blue, whatever you like. Um, you know, I, quite, I quite like this darker suede fabric. Of course, when you render it, which I won't be doing because that will take quite a while, um, I'll render it in a, a low resolution mode. When you render it, you'll be able to see the textures nicely. And also, one more thing. The reason why the wrinkles, why there isn't so much of the um, suede look as in my original result over here is just because of this of the wrinkles we did in the sculpt mode. Um I didn't make them as deep in this one as I did in my original rent, so you can go ahead and do that and it'll look just as good as this image right here. Okay, so a few tips to sp to speed up your render time. Um resolution's good here. Let's just change this to around a uh actually fifty was good for now. You'd want to change it to hundred of course if you want to do a full rent. Sampling, turn this at 100 samples, performance, I set to speed up my run time. 2, 5, 6, okay. So you want to go over here to light paths and click no pause 6. This will, I'm oh, sorry. This will speed up your run time by a lot. I actually don't know what um, Gauss 6 is or what it does. All I know is Andrew Price said it speeds up renders, and I have found that that's true. So go ahead and Select no gold sticks. Alright, so um, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, if you like this video, then please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, then please subscribe. Um, as well, uh, if you have any suggestions of what I can change or what I can do that will make my videos better, please tell me in the comments below. I'm quite new to this whole tutorial making thing, so I'm not very good at it. Um, yeah, well, that's all I have to say. Yeah, you see my. Our result looks quite good. Yeah, so thanks for watching.